reading from Srila Prabhupada Lila Amrit, Volume 1, Chapter 14, Struggling Alone. I used to sit in the back and listen to his meeting silently. He was speaking all impersonal nonsense and I keep my listen silence. Then one day he asked if I would like to speak and I spoke about Krishna consciousness. I challenged that he was speaking manufactured philosophy and all nonsense from Shankaracharya. He tried to back out and said he was not speaking, Shankaracharya was speaking. I said you are representing him, that is the same thing. He then said to me, Swamiji, I like you very much but you cannot speak here. But although our philosophies differed and we would not let me he would not he would not let me speak he was kind and i was nice to him Srila Prabhupada in conversation Prabhupada knew no one in new york city but he had a contact dr ramamurthy mishra he had written dr mishra from butler enclosing the letter of introduction parmananda mehta had given him in bombay he had also phoned dr mishra who welcomed Prabhupada to join him in new york at the Port Authority bus terminal, a student of Dr. Mishra's met him as he arrived from Philadelphia and escorted him directly to an Indian festival in the city. There, Prabhupada met Dr. Mishra as well as Ravi Shankar and his brother, the dancer Uday Shankar. Prabhupada then accompanied Dr. Mishra to his apartment at 33 Riverside Drive beside the Hudson River. The apartment was on the 14th floor and he had large windows overlooking the river. Dr. Mishra gave Prabhupada a room to himself. Dr. Mishra was a dramatic, showy personality given to flashing glances and making expressive gestures with his hands. He regularly used words like lovely and beautiful, presenting an artfully polished image of what a guru should be. He was what, show, what some New Yorkers referred to as an uptown Swami. Before coming to America, Dr. Mishra had been a Sanskrit scholar and a guru as well as a doctor. He had written a number of books such as the textbook of yoga philosophy, psychology and self-analysis and self-knowledge, a work based on the teachings of monistic philosopher Sankara. After he came to the United States, he continued with his medical profession, but as he began um, taking disciples, he gradually dropped his practice. Although a sannyasi, he did not wear the traditional saffron dhoti and kurta, but instead wore tailored Nehru jackets and white slakes. His complexion was dark, whereas Prabhupada's was golden, and he had thick and black hair. At 44, he was young enough to be Prabhupada's son. Dr. Mishra had been suffering from bad health when Srila Prabhupada came into his life, and Prabhupada's arrival seemed the perfect medicine. Ramamurti Mishra his Holiness, Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Goswamiji, really knocked me down with love. He was really an incarnation of love. My body had become a skeleton and he really brought me back to life. His cooking and especially his love and his devotion to Lord Krishna. I was very lazy in the matter of cooking, but he would get up and have ready. Dr. Mishra appreciated that Prabhupada, cooking with possession of a chemist, would prepare many dishes and that he had a gusto for eating. Ramu Timishra. It was not bread he gave me. He gave me prasadam. This was a life. And he saved my life. At that time, I was not sure I would live. But his habit to eat on time, whether I was hungry or not, that I very much liked. He'd get up and say, All right, this is Bhagavad Prashad, Prashadam. And he would say, All right. Yuan Suval. An old student of Dr. Mishra's offense of Srila Prabhupada and her teacher together at Riverside Drive apartment. Joel Suwal, Joan Suwal, um, I have a memory of Swamiji as a child in the sense of his being very innocent, a very simple person, very pure. The impression I have from Dr. Mishra is that he regarded Swamiji as a father figure who was kindly and good. But basically the words most often used referring to Swamiji were like a child, meaning that he was a simple in a classical beautiful sense. Dr. Mishra mentioned to me when I was first introduced to Swamiji that he was a very holy man, very religious, wrapped in God consciousness. 
Swamiji was very sweet. I myself remember him as a very, very good man, even in the practical details of living in New York, which seemed to involve him very much because he was a practical man and was looking for the best place to begin his work. I remember very well that he was always careful about washing his clothes out every night. I would come in and find a group of students in the living room or living area of Dr. Mishra's apartment and in the bathroom would be hung Swamiji's orange robes. Srila Prabhupada would sometimes discuss with Dr. Mishra the aim of his visit to America, expressing his spiritual master's vision of establishing Krishna consciousness in the West. He requested Dr. Mishra to help him, but Dr. Mishra would always refer to his own teaching work, which kept up kept him very busy and to his plans for living leaving the country soon. After a few weeks, when it became inconvenient to maintain Prabhupada at apartment, Dr. Mishra shifted him to his Hatha Yoga studio on the fifth floor of 100 West 72nd Street near Central Park. The large student, sorry, large studio was located in the center of building and included an office and adjoining private room where Prabhupada stayed. It had no windows. Philosophically, at complete odds with Srila Prabhupada, Dr. Mishra accepted the absolute truth in the impersonal feature or Brahma to be supreme. Prabhupada stressed the supremacy of the personal feature or Bhagavan following the Vedic theistic philosophy that the most complete understanding of the absolute truth is personal. The Bhagavad Gita says that the impersonal Brahman is subordinate to Bhagavan and is an emanation from him, just as the sunshine is an emanation from the sun planet. This conclusion had been taught by the leading traditional Acharyas of ancient India, such as Ramanuja and Madhva, and Srila Prabhupada was in disciplic succession from Madhva. Doc uh, Dr. Mishra, on the other hand, followed Sankara, who taught the impersonal presence of absolute truth in all, is all in all, and that the personality of Godhead is ultimately an illusion. Whereas Prabhupada's theistic philosophy accepted the individual spiritual self, Atma, as an eternal servant of the supreme spiritual being, Bhagavan. Dr. Mishra's view accepted the spiritual self as not an individual. Rather, his idea was that since each person is identical with God, the Supreme Brahman, there is no need to worship God outside oneself. As Dr. Mishra would put it, everything is one. Prabhupada challenged, if each of us is actually the Supreme, then why is this Supreme suffering and struggling in the material world? Dr. Mishra would counter that the Supreme is only temporarily covered by illusion and that through Hatha Yoga and meditation, one would become enlightened understanding it is all the Supreme. Prabhupada would again challenge, but if the Supreme could be covered by illusion, then illusion would be greater than God, greater than the Supreme. Prabhupada considered Dr. Mishra as Mayavadi because of his inadvertent acceptance that Maya, illusion, is greater than the absolute truth. For Srila Prabhupada, not only was the impersonal philosophy unpalatable, it was an insult to the personality of Godhead. According to Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 7, 24, 9, 11, unintelligent men who know me not think that I have assumed this form and personality. Due to their small knowledge, they do not know my higher nature, which is ch changeless and supreme. Fools deride me when I appear in this human form. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. Lord Chaitanya had all strong, also strongly refuted the Mayavad philosophy. Everything about the Supreme Personality of Godhead is spiritual, including his body, opulence, and paraphernalia. Mayavad philosophy, however, covers his spiritual opulence and advocates the theory of impersonalism. Before coming to America, Srila Prabhupada had written in his Bhag Bhagavatam purports, the ambitious Mayavadi philosophies philosophers desire to merge into the existence of the Lord. This form of mukti, liberation, means denying one's individual existence. In other words, it is a kind of spiritual suicide. It is absolutely opposed to the philosophy of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga offers immortality to the individual conditioned soul. If one follows the Mayavada philosophy, he misses his opportunity to become immortal after giving up the material body. In the words of Lord Chaitanya, Mayavadi Krishna Aparadi, 
mayavadi impersonalists are great offenders unto lord krishna krishna thus lord chaitanya had concluded that if one even hears the commentary of shankara one's entire spiritual life is spoiled dr mishra was content to align himself with philosophy of shankara and allow prabhupad to stay with lord krishna and the bhagavad gita but shri prabhupad pointed out that even shankara accepted the the personality of god at krishna or narayana exist eternally beyond the material world therefore he is a transcendental person narayana par avyaktat a mendicant prabhupa Prabhupada was temporarily dependent on the goodwill of his mayavadi acquaintance with whom he regularly ate and conversed and from whom he accepted shelter but what a great inconvenience it was he had come to america to speak purely and boldly about krishna but he was being restricted in butler he had been confined by his host's middle class sensibilities now he was silenced in a different way he was treated with kindness but he was considered a threat dr mishra could not allow his students to hear the exclusive praise of lord krishna as the supreme personality of godhead spending most of his time in his new room shila prabhat kept at his typing and translating but when dr mishra held his yoga classes prabhat would sometimes come out and lead a kirtan or lecture robert nelson one of prabhat's first young sympathizers in new york I went to Dr Mishra's service and Dr Mishra talked Swami ji was sitting on a bench and when all of a sudden Dr Mishra stops the service and he gets a big smile and says Swami ji will sing us a song I think Dr Mishra wouldn't let him speak somebody told me Dr Mishra didn't want him to preach every morning several hours before dawn Prabhupada would rise take his bath chant hare krishna on his beats and work at his translating while outside his closed in windowless chamber dawn came and the city awoke he had no stove so daily he had to walk the seven blocks to the riverside drive apartment to cook it would be late morning when he would come out onto the busy street he would walk north on Col- columbus avenue amid the steady flow of pedestrians pausing at each intersection in the sweeping breeze from the river instead of small town scenery of butler he passed through the rows of 30 story office buildings on columbus avenue at street level were shoe repair shops candy stores laundries and continental restaurants the upper stories held the professional suits of doctors dentists and lawyers at 75 street 75th street he would turn west and walk through a neighborhood of brownstone apartment and then across amsterdam to broadway with its center island park the greenery here could more accurately be described as blackery since it was covered with soot and city grim broadway displayed its produce shoes and butcher shops uh, sorry produce shops and butcher shops with their stands extending onto the sidewalk and old men sat on benches in the thin strip of park between the north bound and south bound traffic the last block on 75th before riverside drive held high rise apartment buildings with doormen standing 33 riverside drive also had a doorman sometimes ropad would walk in riverside park still careful for the condition of his heart he liked the long stretches of flat walking area sometimes he would walk from dr mishra's studio down sec- 72nd street to amsterdam avenue to west end super 8 where he would buy produce and spices for his cooking sometimes he would wander through manhattan without any fixed direction and sometimes he would take buses to different areas of the cities on weekends shri prabhupad would accompany dr mishra to his anand ashram one hour north of the city in mondrio new york yohan suwal who used to drive them would overhear their animated conversations in the back seat of her car 
although they spoke in hindi she could hear their discussions turn into loud shouting arguments afterwards they would again become friends at anand ashram prabhupad would usually hold kirtan with dr and with dr mishra students joining him in the chanting and even in dancing dr mishra was particularly fond of prabhupad's chanting ramamurti mishra i have never seen or met any devotee who sang so much and his kirtan was just ambrosial if you pay attention and become relaxed that voice has very electrical vibrations on his heart, on your heart you cannot avoid it 99% of the students whether they liked it or not got up and danced and chanted and i felt very blessed to meet such a great soul have kohen a visitor to anand ashram everyone got up early and went to morning meditation dr mishra was dressed in a golden indian style jacket and his students were already deeply into it when i entered the room all the cushions were taken so i picked a spot in the back of the room where i could lean against the wall to facilitate my meditation seated at one side was an older indian man in saffron cloth and wrapped in a pinkish wool blanket he seemed to be muttering to himself and i later discovered that he was praying it was swami bhaktivedanta his forehead was painted with a white v shaped sign and his eyes were half shut he seemed very serene have tried but he couldn't do the raja yoga he was new to ananda ashram and had only come up for a weekend retreat during this morning meditation he found himself more attracted to the green mist above the lake outside the window than to the circle on the wall he was supposed to be meditating on have i went to my room the rain was increasing and beating against the windows it was peaceful and i was glad to be alone i read for a while suddenly i sensed someone standing in the doorway looking up i saw it was the swami he was wrapped in his pink blanket like a shawl can i come in he asked i nodded yes and he asked if he could sit in the chair in the corner what are you reading he smiled kafka's diaries i replied feeling a little embarrassed oh you said and i put the book down he asked what i was doing at the ashram and if i was interested in yoga what kind of yoga are you studying i don't know much about it i answered but i think i'd like to study hatha yoga this didn't impress him there was a better thing than this he explained there are higher more direct forms of yoga bhakti yoga is the highest it is the science of devotion to god as he spoke i got the overpowering realization that he was right he was speaking the truth a creepy ecstatic sensation came over me that he, this man was my teacher his words were so simple and i kept looking at him all weekend he would sit so calm and dignified with warmth and he asked me to visit him when we got back to the city dr mishra would give lectures carrying the impersonal interpretation of bhagavad gita according to shankara and prabhupad who allowed to speak would counter them once prabhupad asked dr mishra to help him in spreading lord chaitanya's movement but dr mishra sidestepped prabhupad by saying that he considered prabhupad an incarnation of chaitanya mahaprabhu and therefore not in need of help prabhupad replied that since mishra was also the name of lord chaitanya's father Dr Mishra should help spread Lord Chaitanya's movement. Srila Prabhupada offered to engage him in checking the Sanskrit to his translations of Srimad Bhagavatam but Dr Mishra declined a decision he later regretted. Bharta Larsh a student at Anand Ashram my direct encounter with him was in the kitchen. He was very particular and very definite that he would only eat what he cooked himself. He would come and say get me a pot so when i brought him a pot he'd say no bigger no bigger so i brought a bigger pot and he'd say no smaller then he would say get me potato so i'd bring him a potato he prepared food very very quietly he never spoke very much he prepared potatoes and then some vegetables and then chapatis after cooking he would eat outside he would usually cook enough to go around 
for Dr. Mishra and about five or six other people. Every day he would cook that much when he was there. I learned to make chapatis from him. I usually stayed only for the weekends and then went back to the city. I think he left, sorry, he felt that was where his main work was to be done. That was certainly true. But what could he do there with no money or support? He was thinking of staying for only a few weeks and then go back, going back to India. In the meantime, he was working on his Srimad Bhagavatam manuscripts, walking in Manhattan and writing letters. He was studying a new culture, calculating practically and imagining hopefully how to introduce Krishna consciousness to the Western world. He expressed his thoughts to Sumati Munarji. October 27. So far, I have studied the American people are very much eager to learn about the Indian way of spiritual realization and there are so many so-called yoga ashrams in America. Unfortunately, they are not very much adored by the government and it is learned that such yoga ashrams have exploited the innocent people as has been the case in India also. The only hope is that they are spiritually inclined and immense benefit can be done to them if the cult of Srimad Bhagavatam is preached here. Srila Prabhupada noted that the Americans were also giving a good reception to Indian art and music. Just to see the mode of reception, he attended the performance of Madrasi dance, Bala Saraswati. I went to see the dance with a friend. Although for the last 40 years, I have never attended such dance ceremonies. The dancer was successful in her demonstration. The music was in class Indian classical tune, mostly in Sanskrit language and the American public appreciated them. So I was encouraged to see the favorable circumstances about my future preaching work. He said the Bhagavatam could also be preached through music and dance, but he had no means to introduce it. The Christian missions, backed by huge resources, were preaching all over the world. So why couldn't the devotees of Krishna combine to preach the Bhagavatam all over the world? He also noted that the Christian missions had not been effective in checking the spread of communism, whereas Bhagavatam movement, Bhagavatam movement could be because of its philosophical scientific approach. He was deliberately planting a seed of inspiration in the mind of the devoted wealthy Sumati Murarji. November 8. Prabhupada wrote to his godbrother Tirtha Maharaj, who had become president of Gaudiya Math, to remind him that their spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, had a strong desire to open preaching centers in the Western countries. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta had several times attempted to do this by sending sannyasis to England and other European countries, but Prabhupada noted without any tangible result. I have come to this country with the same purpose in view and as far as I can see here in America there is very good scope for preaching the cult of Lord Chaitanya. Prabhupada pointed out that there were certain Mayabadi groups who had buildings but were not attracting many followers. But he had talked with Swami Nikhilananda of the Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna mission who had given the opinion that the Americans were suitable for Bhakti Yoga. I am here and see a good field for work, but I am alone, without men and money. To start a center here, we must have our own buildings. If the leaders of the Gaudiya Math would consider opening their own branch in New York, Srila Prabhupada would be willing to manage it. But without their own house, he reported, they could not conduct a mission in the city. Srila Prabhupada wrote that they could open centers in many cities throughout the country if his godbrothers would cooperate. He repeatedly made the point that although our other groups did not have the genuine spiritual philosophy of India, they were buying many buildings. The Gaudiya Mat, however, had nothing. If you agree to cooperate with me as I have suggested above, then I shall extend my visa period. My present visa period ends by end of this November. But if I receive your confirmation immediately, then I shall extend my visa period. Otherwise, I shall return to India. November 9, 6 p.m. While Prabhupada sat alone in his fifth floor room in Dr. Mishra's yoga studio, the lights suddenly went off. This was his experience of the first moments 
of the New York City blackout of 1965. In India, power failure occurred commonly. So Prabhupada, while surprised to find the same thing in New in America, remained undisturbed. He became chant. He began chanting the Krishna, <coughs> the Hare Krishna ma mantra on his beats. Meanwhile, outside his room, the entire New York metropolitan area had been plunged into darkness. The massive power failure had suddenly left the entire city without electricity, trapping 800,000 people in the subways and affecting more than 330, hmm, yeah, 30 million people in nine sta states and three Canadian provinces. Two hours later, a man from Dr. Mishra's apartment arrived at the door with candles and some fruit. He found Prabhupada in a pleasant mood, sitting there in the darkness, chanting Hare Krishna. The man informed him of the serious nature of such a blackout in New York City. Prabhupada thanked him and returned again to his chanting. The blackout lasted until 7 the next morning. Srila Prabhupada received a reply to his letter of November 8 to Tirtha Maharaj in Calcutta. Prabhupada had explained his hopes and plans for staying in America but he had stressed that his godbrothers would have to give him their vote of confidence as well as some tangible support. His godbrothers had not been working cooperatively. Each leader was interested more in maintaining his own building than in working with the others to spread the teachings of Lord Chaitanya around the world. So how would it be possible for them to share Srila Prabhupada's vision of establishing a branch in New York City? They would see it as his separate attempt. Yet despite the unlikely odds, he appealed to their missionary spirit and reminded them of the desire of their spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. There, Guru Maharaj wanted Krishna consciousness to be spread in the West. But when Prabhupada finally got Tirtha Maharaj's reply, he found it unfavorable. His god brother did not argue against his attempting something in New York, but he politely said that the Gaudiamat funds could not be used for such a proposal. Prabhupada replied, It is not very encouraging. Still, I am not a man to be disappointed. In fact, he found a little hope in Tirthamara's reply. So he described to his godbrother the property he had recently found for sale at 143 West 72nd Street. The building, only 18 and a half feet wide and 100 feet deep, consisted of first floor store, a basement, and a mezzanine. Prabhupada presented Tirtha Maharaj the price 100,000 with a 20,000 cash down payment and remarked that this building was twice the size of their research institute in Calcutta. Prabhupada conceived of the basement as a kitchen and dining area and the first floor as lecture hall and the mezzanine as personal apartments with a separate area for deity of Lord Krishna. Appropriately, Prabhupada had described himself as a man not to be disappointed. He was convinced that if there were a center where people could come here, uh, come here from a pure devotee, the genuine God consciousness, God conscious culture of India could begin in America. Yet because he had made his plans dependent on obtaining an expensive building in Manhattan, his goal seemed unreachable. Still, he was persistently writing to prominent devotees in India, though they were not interested in his plans. Why should they not help? He thought, after all, they were devotees of Krishna. Shouldn't the devotees come forward to establish the first Krishna temple in America? Certainly, he was qualified and authorized to spread the, the message of Krishna. As for the place, New York was perhaps the most cosmopolitan city in the world. He had found a building, not very expensive, a good location, and there, were, there was a great need for a Krishna temple here to offset the propaganda of the Indian Mayavadis. The Krishna Bhaktas to whom he was writing understood Lord Krishna to be, more, to, to be not simply a Hindu deity, but the Supreme Lord, worshipable for the whole world. So they should be pleased to see Krishna worshipped in the New York. Krishna himself said in the Bhagavad Gita, Give up all other duties and surrender to me. So if they were Krishna's devotees, why would they not help? What kind of devotee was it who did not want to glorify the Lord? 
but Srila Prabhupada did not judge beforehand uh, who would serve Krishna's mission and who would not. He was fully surrendered and fully dependent on Krishna and in obedience to his spiritual master, he would approach everyone without discrimination to ask for help. There was Sumati Muraji. She had helped him in publishing the Bhagavatam and she had sent him to America. In a recent letter to her, he had also he had only given hints. I am just giving you the idea. And if you kindly think over the matter seriously and consult your beloved Lord Balakrishna, surely you will be further enlightened in the matter. There is scope and there is certainly necessity also. And it is the duty of every Indian, especially the devotees of Lord Krishna, to take up the matter. But he had received no reply. He had not heard from her since Butler, though her words to him had seemed prophetic and they had stuck with him. I feel that you should stay there until you fully recover from your illness and return only after you have completed your mission. Now, Subhati Murarji must do something big. He told her point blank. I think therefore that a temple of Balakrishna in New York may immediately be started for this purpose. And as a devotee of Lord Balakrishna, you should execute this great and noble work. Till now, there is no worshipable temple of the Hindus in New York. Although in India, there are so many American missionary establishments and churches. So I shall request you to do this noble act and it will be rec rec recorded in the history of the world that the first Hindu temple is started by a pious Hindu lady, Sumati, Srimati Sumati Morarji, who is not only a big business magnet in India, but a pious Hindu lady and great devotee of Lord Krishna. This task is for you and glorious at the same time. He assured her that he had no ambition to become the proprietor of a house or a temple in America, but for preaching, a building would be absolutely required. They should have association of bona fide devotees of the Lord. They should join the Kirtan glorifying the Lord. They should hear the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. They should have the intimate touch with the temple or place of the Lord. And they should be given ample chance to worship the Lord in the temple. Under the guidance of the bona fide devotee, they can be given such facilities. And the way of Srimad Bhagavatam is open for everyone. He informed her that he had located a building just suitable for this great missionary work. It was ideal, as if it was built for this purpose only. And your simple willingness to do the act will complete everything smoothly. The house is practically three stories, ground floor, basement, and two stories up, with all the suitable arrangements for gas, heat, etc. The ground floor may be utilized for preparing of prasadam of Balakrishna, because the preaching center will not be for dry speculator speculation, but for actual gain for delicious prasadam. I have already tested how the people here like the vegetable prasadam prepared by me. They will forget meat eating and pay for the expenses. American people are not poor men like the Indians. And if they appre appreciate a thing, they are prepared to spend any amount on such hobby. They are being exploited simply by jugglery of words and bo bodily gymnastics and still they are spending for that but when they will have the actual actual commodity and feel pleasure by eating very delicious prasadam of balakrishna i am sure a unique thing will be introduced in america now according to his plans he were he had a week left in america my term to stay in America will be finished by the 17th of November, 1965. But I am believing in your foretelling. You should stay here, stay there until you fully recover your health and return after you have completed your mission. Tagore Society of New York, Inc. cordially invites you to a lecture, God Consciousness by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Date Sunday, November 28th. 1965 time lecture 3 30 p.m t 4 30 place new york house 3 east 64th street a widely respected scholar and religious leader in india swami bhaktivedanta is briefly visiting new york he has been engaged in a monumental endeavor of translating the 60 volume srimad bhagavatam from sanskrit into english november 28 dawood harun had never met Srila Prabhupada. 
He was a musician living downtown and he used to attend the meetings of the Tagore Society up on 64th Street, Dawood Harun. I went uptown and walked into the auditorium and I noticed that the stage was empty and a few people were sitting toward the rear of the auditorium. I walked forward down the city El uh, Azel because I usually like to sit up front. Then I saw an old gentleman sitting over to the right and he sort of drew me over to him. So I went over and sat beside him and then I noticed that he was saying his beats. Even though he had his beats in a bag, I could hear them and I could see his body moving. And I felt very comfortable because this was something I was used to. As I was sitting there looking around the auditorium, he just turned around and smiled at me very nicely. He nodded his head and I nodded my head and he smiled and turned around. Then he turned back to me again and softly asked me if I was from India. I said, no, sir, I am from, I'm not from India. I am from here, the United States. He turned back and he kept chanting with his beats. Then he turned around the next time and asked if I was a Hindu. I said, I said, no, sir, I am not a Hindu. I am a Muslim. And he said, oh, very good, very good. Yes, many times I hear the children in India reciting the Quran. And then he turned back around and his body was moving, rocking and he was working with his beats. Then there were a few more exchanges of pleasantries, sort of intermittent. And then a lady came up on the stage, announced that the lecture was to begin. And if the folks could give the speaker a round of applause, they would welcome him to the stage. At that point, the man I was sitting next to put his hand on my shoulder and said, excuse me, sir, could you do me a favor? And I said, yes, anything. He said, would you watch over my books? I looked down on the floor and he had several books boxes of books and an umbrella and several other articles i said yes i would watch over these and he said excuse me he walked up the easel and um, surprisingly he walked up on the stage and it was the man i had come to hear swami bhaktivedanta i walked up on the stage he sorry he walked up on the stage and introduced himself to people and tried to give the get them to come forward he said, come forward, come forward. A few of them came up to the front. There were mixed couples, many Indians, male and female, mostly middle-aged and some co college-aged, a lot of professor types and ladies were there. Then he began his speech. He dove right into it. He just started exclaiming, proclaiming the greatness of the creator and that the most important thing is to remember the creator and remember God. He began to expand on God consciousness, what God consciousness is and how God is everyone everywhere and how it behooves us all to remember God, no matter what we call him, what names we call him by, but that we should call him. He gave a demonstration which was very moving. He chanted Hare Krishna, Hare Rama and spoke about the power and saving grace in the mantra. He took a little break about halfway through and had some water. The last thing he said as he was coming down from the podium was that he had copies of the Bha Srimad Bhagavatam. He explained that he had been working on them and that they come, they came in three volumes and were $16. Then he concluded and came down. A lot of people went over to him. Some were timid, some were enthusiastic. Some people shook his hand and were asking for books. At first, there were about 15 people gathered around him, talking to him and asking questions. With so many people around, he came over to me and said, Sir, would you do me one more favor? Will you kindly take over the selling of the books? People will be coming to you for the books. So you sell the books and put the money into this in this little box and I will be with you in a minute. I said fine. So while he talked to the people, others came to came up to me. They must have thought I was somehow his secretary 
or his traveling companion and people were coming over to me and asked me personal questions about him which i couldn't really answer because i didn't know some people were buying the books or looking through me through them so this went on and i was trying to listen to him carry on his conversations with people and carry on the book selling at the same time some of the people were looking for a guru and trying to find out what he was supposed to be some of them were really interrogating him but he just smiled and answered all their questions sim- simply i remember he told them you will know there's no pressure you will know if i am your guru he suggested that people go over and read the books and then the group dwindled down to about half a dozen and few remaining were just looking at him and some were uh, too timid to approach him he walked over to them and spoke to them putting them at ease later he came over and we counted the collection and i helped him pack up his box and carry downstairs the boxes of books that were left as we parted he thanked me very much and i gave him my name and address and phone number and purchased a set of shrimad bhagavatams shila prabhupad ki jai his holiness satswarupa goswami maharaj ki jai hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji yeah. well, thank you for a very nice narration thank you mother prabhu par lila amrit yeah again so much so much so much uh, from prabhu pad to learn and to see that yeah how nicely he was uh, managing and staying with uh, dr mishra they both belong to different philosophies but how brilliantly he was doing over there and then again he he, he was as one line in the chapter na that uh, he does not get get discouraged Yeah. disappointed yeah yeah so yeah he has been proving it since all this 13 14 chapters yeah, yeah. so so wonderful thank you prabhu ji thank you yeah thank you anyone else want to share how it was hari krishna prabhu ji yes prabhu ji it was uh, really very nice first time of shri prabhu pad i liked uh, that uh, that uh, uh, particular <laughs> uh, conversation can all very very was written that shri uh, prabhu pad he sometimes was yes, doing uh, argument and also giving opposing arguments to dr mishra uh, because he could not tolerate the insult towards lord krishna's uh, mm-hmm. yeah hare krishna personal nature yeah i mean i'm facing some network issue yeah but i also yeah i also like this point very much how to um, how to make best out of the out of the worst bargain am i audible again yes prabhu yeah yeah how to make best out of the worst bargain not losing hope even in the last moment yeah and uh, really yeah it needs a lot of energy yeah just uh, not only the passion but a lot of energy and also not caring any kind of disappointing situations and to always uh, be goal oriented he always wanted to please his guru and if at all if there is something that uh, i think i was telling to deepali mata ji yeah um, that nothing is superior than chanting the holy name but uh, i see here the spirit of serving spiritual master is even above that because that includes also this you yeah, know so if we can have this one goal to serve our spiritual master because that is the purpose of life 
yeah, it is not that going back to head is ultimate goal or yeah, purpose of life. The purpose of life is to serve. Yeah, you know, just if we see the spirit of uh, Shabari, yeah, if we see great Vaishnavas, they they are uh, ready to go through any kind of challenges, whether it is greenery, whether it is blackery or redery, whatever. The people who go to red light areas to preach, mm -hmm. very tough. There are people who go to the red places where there is a lot of slaughterhouses. They go and preach there. Huh. Um, they go to the places where they can see literally the missiles going in, in front of their eyes. Yeah, I was hearing last Sunday, I was talking to Dandasrik Prabhu. Yeah, he was talking about a, a devotee called Nikhilananda Prabhu. Yeah, he's also a Prabhupada disciple. How he was, he, yeah, great spirit he had. He at that age also, yeah, he went to those areas where the war was very active. Yeah, he went, I don't remember, is some Kazakhstan or some, some area there where uh, when he came on top of his, uh, yeah, on the roof, he could see a missile going. What he was doing is only chanting, chanting and chanting and distributing the books, distributing, helping devotees. Why? Because they have seen Prabhupada, how he took the spirit of serving his spiritual master. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what is evident here also, that Prabhupada. Uh, yeah, so one may think that, okay, let me compromise a standard so that I can at least be in US. Huh? He didn't compromise his standard just to, to stay in US. But he was there in US because he wanted to uh, boldly preach Prabhupada mission, his guru's mission. Yeah, that is one thing. And uh, then the other thing is also the um, hmm. so many devotee students, right? Just imagine, yeah, how to tell this. Uh, we are talking about so many things called child abuse. Yeah, or uh, so many kinds of abuses we hear, right? What abuse was happening in US was uh, spiritual abuse. Yeah, so uh, students were uh, taught in the name of spirituality something else, and that too, mm, that was going in uh, disguise. Yeah, because we see when, for example, Dr. Mishra, he was, yeah, he was telling his own philosophies, uh, uh, making a lot of mass gatherings but when it came to really spreading that truth that was hidden yeah that was kept aside yeah so so many abuses in the name of god is also happening so and Prabhupada, yeah he was trying his god brothers he was trying uh, uh, with sumati morarji at the age of yeah 70 and then he used to make small, small uh, contacts, uh, very successful contacts, whether it is in Butler or whether it is here in New York. Yeah. I think we should also yeah, learn from this that, yeah, we are already in the West and how we can make small, small contacts wherever we are and uh, see, learn this art of how Prabhupada uh, was accepted by everyone so that we can also be accepted by everyone and we can speak to them the same message. Yep. Yeah.